Greetings and salutations. Thank you for clicking on this video. Today we're going to take a look at something really cool called OB Revenge. It is a distribution that was put together by a fellow named Jody and it is based on Arch Linux. This is kind of an unofficial distribution. He did it just to see what he could do and I guess I've been talking to him now for about a month and we've been going back and forth and I've been downloading different images and playing with it. Lots of folks ask me to look at Linux distributions, official and unofficial things that they do. And sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. It depends on how much time I've got. And unfortunately, I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to be doing as much distro reviews and hopping around and looking at distros as I have this summer because the kids are coming back and school is starting and things is, things are going to change. We'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of the video. First off, let's talk about this neat little thing called OB Revenge. It is based on Arch Linux. It is an open box desktop and so therefore you get the open box menu when you right click and it brings up all of the applications but you also have your choice of panels and when you first boot it up you get the XFCE panel complete with the whisker menu and it has quite an interesting selection of software here the download is about 1.2 gigabytes so get a full LibreOffice, a music player, all the basic stuff. I'm not going to go through all that. You guys have seen the applications and uh, you can check it out for yourself if you want to because I'm going to put a link to his SourceForge page uh, in the description to this video. But first thing that we want to do is open up a terminal and he doesn't have it set. When you click on terminal the first time there, it uh, asks you what terminal you want to use and the only terminal that seems to be installed is Xterm. If there's another terminal on here, you'd have to go find it. I think XFCE4 terminal is on here as well. There might be a selection. However, I went ahead and installed Terminator because that's the one that I like the best. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that we can see exactly what's going on in here. mouse is a little unresponsive in the virtual machine so if it's, it appears that I'm taking some time to do that that's why so yes this is Arch Linux and it is running the latest kernel so that is cool if you want to play with Arch this is a good way to get into it he has modified the columnary installer uh, to install this on your system and that was something that I actually suggested because originally it had the command line installer and while it was pretty easy to use it's not that uh, doing it from a CLI was the problem the problem was is that it wasn't installing it properly so he actually went and came up with his own installer based on Calamari which makes it super easy to install if you have done Linux Mint or Ubuntu you can install this it's no big deal Okay, so let's look at some of the cool things we got going on here. And first of all, I'm going to open up the settings. And here are uh, the settings panel. First thing we have here is connectivity. And this is uh, so you can work with networks. And then we have settings for the desktop. And it opened up behind there. I thought it would do that. It did that before. Very simple here as far as your desktop settings are concerned. You can set if you want icons on the desktop. And uh, you choose a background just by choosing a file. And of course this goes along with OpenBox. So if you've never seen OpenBox before, uh, some of these things might, uh, if you haven't, you've not seen this if you have seen open box some of it might be familiar and then we have the desktop manager settings and of course that refers to the uh, login screen so you can get in there and configure light dm which is the 
desktop manager that he's using here. Display settings. This is something that I had to suggest because I have dual monitors and I actually installed this on hardware to play with it and I couldn't uh, change my display settings so this is something that I suggested that he put in there. When I first downloaded this it was really ba really bare bones and here is something that actually probably needs a little bit of work and this is this thing that says manage printing. Right now if I click on it it just takes me to a browser and it's a page it can't open. I'm not sure what's going on in, with that, but that I know that's something that uh, Jody is currently working on. Here's where you can add things to start up when the desktop loads. Here's a very cool feature that he has in here. <clears throat> we can switch panels. So right now it is set to XFCE. Well, what if you want the tent panel? Well, there you go. There's the tent panel. Or how about the LX panel from uh, the LXDE desktop? Or XFCE. I'll leave it on XFCE. Power manager settings. That's from the XFCE desktop. That was also a suggestion that I made. I said, dude, you got to be able to control that stuff. People want their machine to go to sleep, wake up, do something when the lid closes, you know, that sort of thing. Here's a new feature since the last time I looked at this, preferred applications. You can go through here and choose what applications you want to open. Here's where you can work with QT themes to make sure that QT renders as well as GTK. That's also a new feature, which is really cool. And then he has taken PAMEC. This is the software manager that you would find in Manjaro. And he has actually uh, put it on Arch. So this is the same functionality that you get from Manjaro, but yet we are working with the Arch repositories. And this is just super easy to work with. So if you would, uh, you know, just type in a, the name of a package. I've already installed a couple of things here. I have not installed BleachBit. So it finds it, and I say, yeah, I want to install it, and we will apply, and that's the package, and I say, yep, go ahead and do it. And now we're installing BleachBit. BleachBit is installed, and take a look at some of the settings in here. Let's go to preferences. So you have access to the AUR. I had to activate that. So we can install packages from there. So this is really cool. It's Arch Linux, but it's already configured with a graphic installer, which makes things really easy. So if you don't want to fool around with Pac-Man and a terminal all the time, then that's something you might want to do. And then we have uh, the theme here. This is for uh, the desktop itself. Just the desktop itself. Got New Mix and Raleigh installed. We can change the fonts here. If I was going to run this on hardware, then I would definitely be making those fonts bigger. A little small for my taste. Here's where we can configure Tent 2. So if you want to use that panel, there's the configuration for it. We have an update manager. Let's see how that works. I don't have we don't have much in the way of updates. We'll go ahead and install them. Yep, go ahead. So it's going out and it's installing the network manager and uh, the other updates that are available there. He's got it set up where instead of we getting a full uh, 
little block on the panel that says what application is open we just get icons so you just hover over that we're building packages we can take a look at the uh, panel up here in the upper right we got a desktop switcher and the desktop switches uh, I was going to say it switches with the arrow keys, but it doesn't seem to be doing that. Oh, it does. There it goes. So that's pretty cool. So if you're used to using alternate control in the arrow keys to switch your desktop around, that's awesome. Oh, you can use up and down too. See, we're switching them. That's nice. Okay, we have a clock. Look at the properties on the clock. Go to the date and time settings. Let's see if NTP is working. Now I have to enable that or install something, I guess. Let's see what else we got. Volume. Got a search. Network. Updates. So that is a kind of a look around there, and that's basically it. It is very simple and straightforward based on OpenBox. If you'd like to tinker with it, you can download it and play with it. I do suggest that this is for folks who are, number one, a bit familiar with Arch Linux, and uh, number two, that you're ready to deal with maybe a bug here and there simply because of the fact that this this is very much in the development stage and it's not like an official distribution this is just one guy who's working on a cool implementation of open box for arch but it, once you install this you've got a nice arch linux setup and of course you can change it and do whatever you want to do with it so that is pretty awesome and then we have just a little bit of documentation here, so I guess maybe we should open that up and take a look at it. Curious what we opened up to. G-Edit, the latest version of G-Edit. So this is what G-Edit now looks like, I guess. So I should be able to make these fonts bigger. Nah, I'd have to go into settings and do that. So there's the documentation, not much. Like I said, this is just, he's just kind of playing around with uh, Arch Linux and the OpenBox desktop, but it's definitely a good start. And it's kind of nice to see uh, somebody who is taking Arch and putting a friendly face on it. There are several installers these days for Arch Linux. There's uh, Anagos, and uh, I think the Architect project is now kind of over and done with. Uh, they also had, uh, there's also one called Apricity. I think that's based on Arch, but I'm not really sure. Somebody asked me about that the other day. So anyway, um, you know, if you want to tinker with Arch Linux, this is a good place to look. Or you can just download straight Arch, and <laughs> you can go to the wiki and then go through all the steps to install it, which is what the Arch folks would want you to do anyway. So now that we have come down to the end of this video, just wanted to let you guys know that I have done a lot of videos this summer where I've looked at different distros and 
I put up that video where I said, you know, uh, what's the best Linux distro? They all suck, which was kind of like my uh, review of some of the things that I had looked at. Uh, by the way, the title of that was meant tongue in cheek. I, some people didn't get that and they went kind of crazy and said, you know, you're being mean to your viewers or whatever the deal is. You know, you know my attitude is, eh, if you can't take a joke, who wants you around? But anyway, um, what's happening is, is that in the next few days here, my kids are going to be coming back from school. And when they get here, or coming back for the summer to go to school, let's start that all over again. My kids have spent the summer with their mom in Missouri. They are coming home, all right? And when they get here, uh, we're going to be getting ready to start a new school year. So I don't think I'm going to have time to be doing a lot of distro review videos or reviewing distros or looking at things like that. I might be able to sneak one in every now and again, but um, the flow of videos may slow down for a little while until we get settled into the new school year experience. So just kind of keep that in mind. Thank you for all the nice feedback and thank you very much for all the kind words. A lot of folks have uh, sent my directions and mess messages and things like that. And, um, you know, we'll just see what, what happens as we roll along here. Thanks for watching. Do check out freedompenguin.com for lots of great stories about Linux from contributors such as myself. And also check out Easy Linux on the web to find out more about how I can help you get started with Linux. And also check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And when you do, give it a like. Would appreciate that. This is where all of the content that I produce for the internet shows up is on the Easy Linux site. And you can... Uh, the uh, Easy Linux Facebook page is what I mean. You can go and follow that, and then anytime that I come up with something that I think you might be interested in, I will post it there. So, once again, thank you for watching. This seems to be taking an awful long time to build these packages. Have you guys noticed that? wonder if this is not working properly. It just says it's building packages. Oh well, I'm going to let it run here. We'll see what it does, and if it crashes, it crashes. <laughs> Thanks for watching, gang. Talk to you again soon.